So hi, I'm Matthew Burke. I'm a chiropractor and natural integrative practitioner on the northern beaches of Sydney. I'm the director of Optimum Health Essentials uh, that's been you know, providing these integrative natural therapies for the last uh, 17 years. In clinical practice for us, it's really making sure we, we know what their key goals are, you know, what, what's brought them in and what are they hoping to achieve with, with their system and helping them understand that, that they may come in with a physical problem, but that might have an emotional primary. You know, the reason that that's, their lower back really has gone into an acute spasm when they haven't done anything to, to, to cause that is because of you know, and some financial stress that they might have been going through at the time and the, way, the beliefs they have around that which causes the body to get stuck. It's not really the financial stress itself, it's the story they tell themselves about it you know, and, when, and the energy to get stuck because of that. So we can go in and there's really effective tools we have for quickly establishing what that is and, and cutting to the chase of what's underneath that in order to release the energy. These things you, you need to be able to map through and using applied kinesiology is a really powerful tool for looking at a broad range of things and being able to narrow down really quickly so that when you do choose to do uh, pathology tests to really quantify and, and verify something, you're very targeted and you're not wasting resources and time testing a whole range of things that you don't even need. Whenever we're looking at, at a problem, it's never keeping it one dimensional and thinking, well, I'm a carpenter, I'm just going to hit it with a hammer, right? So we see ourselves as having the full spectrum of things and that we can uh, focus on for someone, whether it's physical, chemical or emotional and helping to, to move them in the direction that addresses the primary and also addresses as far upstream as you can, you know? If you can, you don't want to be working on all the, the, the secondary symptoms of something. You really want to go back and try and find the primary cause uh, so that when you shift that, it changes everything downstream for that, you know? Um, and, and that's our focus. That's always, it's like, well, what, why? Why is that there? You know, not, oh, you have this, so let's just address this symptom this way. As we develop our mission as, as, a, as a company and, as, and, and, and the key intent that we had for people was really to look at how do we develop that, the science of feeling amazing through them. So people come in with whatever's going on. They might come into us with anxiety or they might come with depression or they might come with a physical problem, a shoulder problem or a lower back problem or those sorts of things, which is really the, the motivator for them to, to make change in their life, right? So, as they, 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 they'll come in and we'll do an assessment and make sure we can you know, address what's going on for them in that way, but then also allow them to understand the, what, what their potential is, you know, what's available to them in this sort of space and things that they can do to really maximise their health and, and therefore their outcomes that they're experiencing in their life. So ketosis is the state that the body goes into when it's relying on fat as its primary energy source. Uh, it's something that Traditionally, like when we were evolving over thousands of years, we would have mostly been in ketosis because uh, we would be relying on, on, you know, foraging around for certain things, for certain plants, for certain berries, and occasionally we might make a kill of an animal and be able to eat protein and fats and that kind of stuff. We were very rarely harvesting grains and, and refined sugars and all those sorts of things. We'd have some seasonal options for that where fruits might be available and and that kind of thing where, we, where our insulin cycle would work and we'd get to, when you're in that insulin dominance, when your body's burning sugar, then it wants to put on weight and save for a rainy day, you know, and that's great as long as you're not doing that all the time. So ketosis allows us to, to go back when we, when we actively put people into ketosis these days, it's really, you know, we're in that ketotic state that you, you, your body's um, in, a, in a more anti-inflammatory state. Uh, it has much better mental clarity and it starts to run much more efficiently. So your, your energy just stays really consistent all day. To get into ketosis, uh, naturally, uh, the, key, the you know what you, people have to do obviously is fast. You know, you got to give up all those carbs and sugars and all that kind of stuff, and and put your body in more of a fasting state so it starts to burn, uh, to burn its fats. Now, when you're making that transition, you've got to be very careful because you don't want to start using all your proteins up, and you, you, you bro your your body will also go into gluconeogenesis where it'll want to you know take protein from your muscle mass and actually run it through the liver and, and turn it into a, a form of energy um, of glucose that the, the brain can use. So um, if you fast too much, then you, you risk going into that sort of a state. So it's a, it's a, tr 
a balance that you've got to get as you make that transition to get yourself into ketosis so you're actually burning your fats most efficiently and not you know burning your protein so that's where we found um, recent developments in science that ability to use uh, exogenous ketones like keto os makes that shift so much easier you know because you can use the exogenous ketones to move people in instantly into ketosis pretty much as soon as they have it uh, and then also naturally transition them into that um, so that their body's now running on that uh, in that ketosis state for the whole day so they might have a um, a sachet of, uh, of keto os in the morning and then have a, have a lunch that doesn't have any carbs in it and just has you know protein some fats and some greens uh, and also when you when you use exogenous ketones because you're naturally running on that as your energy source your body stops uh, craving sugars so you and that's probably the the biggest clinical significance um the, the the significant thing that we use it for is because if you can stop that addiction to sugar that people have and stop that addiction to bread and carbs you're addressing so many of their underlying health conditions you know because we know sugar itself is creates inflammation it creates oxidative stress it causes an overgrowth of the wrong bacteria and overgrowth of yeast in the system and that affects so many people and so many kids So one of the biggest challenges when you're trying to move someone in the direction of a, of a healthier diet and a healthier lifestyle approach that you know is to get them off the things the foods that they're addicted to and because you can have a good diet for a while you know and, and you can use your willpower to get there but willpower breaks down at the end of the day okay because once your brain and your prefrontal cortex becomes fatigued it doesn't have that ability to keep overriding your preferences. So by the end of the day, you come home and you know, you're know you just like, oh, I'm just tired mentally. I've got to deal with the kids and all that sort of stuff. And, you, and so you reach for the convenient energy source, you know? And look, realistically, it's always going to be carbs and sugar because that's just the, the way everything's packaged, you know? And uh, all those things will then pop your insulin up and take you out of ketosis and, and, and create these, these pro-inflammatory states that we, that we find people in. So um, having a exogenous ketones at that time so preempting that drop in blood sugar preempting that that fatigue that happens mentally if you have your exogenous ketones in the afternoon say before school pick up or um or just early afternoon then you've got great energy coming into that time and that desire for sugar is not there um, and it's like anything the, the, so the most dangerous bit of chocolate is always your first piece because then it's a challenge to try and stop right but if you don't have any in the first place and, and, you've, and you've got enough energy then you don't even think about it so we don't want to rely on willpower because willpower only works for a, a certain period of time and then under as soon as the stress gets to a certain point you lose that ability but with exogenous ketones and, and keto os then it gives people an easy convenient way of moving into ketosis having the energy and mental clarity that they need so they don't feel like they're scratching around for for food to try and to fill that void um, and allows then the, the foods you start to crave in that situation is is greens you know you start to crave green vegetables salad greens and that kind of stuff because that helps you to you know, break down your fats effectively and to convert them to energy. You know, you need your folates out of your dark green leafies and you need your magnesium and those sorts of nutrients that you get in those foods. So, um, yeah, that, you know, using keto OS is, is the easiest way we found to, to move in that direction and, and give people the energy that they need. Sugar is one of the biggest stresses that our body faces in modern modern life. You know that, that you know we know that sugar is the thing that drives the oxidative stress that, that causes a lot of you know the, the essential the rusting or aging of the body, uh, and that includes your bones, your cartilage, um, and, and all your other tissues. Like they actually brown over time as if you're being slowly cooked because of sugar. You know, and that doesn't happen if you take those things things out. So. You know, for kids, the biggest stresses, and I just saw it in a cafe the other day, this, you know, this young child, about six, and they're making a chocolate milkshake. They put, you know, three Oreo choc cookies in. They mixed it with um, chocolate sauce. Uh, then they added some other, some ice cream in there and a little bit of milk and a little bit of extra sugar, and they blended it, and they gave it to this little six-year-old. But like, honestly, that was enough sugar to, to run that child for 18 months. Right, and that's bang, there you go. And then that mum will get home thinking, she did that with love, right? She did that because she cares about the child. She wants to have a good time. And yeah, the child has a good time, but that's like, you know, 
the equivalent of, of giving them cocaine because it's as addictive as that, right? And you create this sh huge spike in their blood sugar. Then they get home and the child's just, you know, behaviorally losing the plot two hours later. And then they, they're home and they're screaming and they're losing the plot. And they're like, what's happened to my child? My child's gone crazy. And yeah, that's what happens when you feed them something that's highly addictive and spikes their brain chemistry so much. So yeah, it makes them feel good in the short term, but that comes at a really high cost. So we need to move away from that behavior and that reward system. And so, you know, again, kids, when they come home from school, they have that drop in blood sugar when they, as they you know, get home at three, so they can be irritable and grumpy. And they often will just raid the pantry and eat whatever they can find, which again is nearly always carbs and sugar. And then they, you know, don't eat healthy foods at dinner time. <laughs> so, you know, so that giving them exogenous ketones as soon as they get home, again, pops their energy up in a way that has them burning fat as their fuel source and not going for sugars. So it takes away that, that appetite that they have and, you know, gets them choosing healthier things by the time they get to dinner time. They naturally feel like eating healthier which is what we found. And that has a huge effect on behavior and focus and, and the functioning of the whole family unit. <coughs> in adults, the, um, you know, the, the, the key issues for sugar is obviously type two diabetes. It contributes to osteoarthritis. It really overgrows your microbiome. So that contributes to brain fog and fatigue and, when, and, and also anxiety and depression. So then you get caught up in that cycle where you know you're tired so you drink coffee coffee spikes your insulin then you eat more sugar then you you come home and you're wired and and, and tired so then you need a, a wine and then you know and then people are in this constantly you know destructive cycle which is what's called normal <laughs> but, but leads people into these chronic states of dysfunction you know because you you're feeling crap so therefore you you don't make great choices and therefore you're irritable and that's not very good for you as a parent and that's not really good for you as a spouse and it brings out those lower levels of your personality type so you know the importance of it can't be underestimated this is not a small deal this is not just this oh you should do this because it's a good idea you know this is like this you know this pattern is contributing to so much dysfunction in people's lives you know not just their health but their relationships and how much fun they're having and the choices they make and those little choices in every moment really determine where you end up you know, and, and it plays a huge factor over time. So, you know, I think giving people easy ways to make these transitions into, you know, higher states of living is just so critical. And, and Keto OS is that sort of supplement that um, can act as a meal replacement, but it also can help to just supplement a, a, a really good transitional diet for people. And, you know, honestly, they can't, you know, once they're a couple of weeks into it, they can't believe how different they feel, you know, and it's, uh, and it's just a no-brainer because it takes all the, the stress out of sh that shift to ketosis, which would normally take three or four days and require fasting and really specific dietary interventions, which you know, people find challenging to do that and go about their, their normal life. You know? It's okay to do that when you're on a retreat and you've got nothing else to do, but you know, trying to manage kids and run businesses or, or work in demanding jobs, and, and that's quite a hard thing to pull off and therefore not generally sustainable unless they have a huge degree of uh, self-regulation, which, you know, that's a small proportion of people. <laughs> Why exogenous ketones work is that they actually, you know, in a, in a short period of time after ingesting them, they move your, bodies, your body into ketosis, okay? So once in ketosis, your body's running a different system completely biochemically than what it runs when it's in, an, in what we call an insulin dependent system. So your body responds to, to, in, to sugar by, as blood sugar increases, your body produces insulin and that allows the cells, you know, muscle cells and other tissues to take up um, that, the, that, that glucose and either store it as fat or use it as energy. You know, but it's, your body's got to try and keep that at a very consistent level. So, you know, so it's, it's having to, it often will, um, because if, you, if the blood sugar gets too high, that's so dangerous for the system that your body will often secrete more insulin than it needs and that causes that blood sugar dropout, which is why when people run on insulin, they're doing this all day, you know? So they have this initial up with the first coffee and their piece of toast, you know, and then, then they crash around 10 and they need something sweet, you know, again, like they'll either have another, co another coffee or they'll have some biscuits or they might have a piece of fruit if they're feeling slightly healthy. And then, um, and then that, that gets them through to lunchtime. And if they have a high sugar lunch and they crash again by three, so again, they're looking for something 
then it, you know and, and it becomes that almost desperation to get it whereas when you're on when you're running on ketones ketones are like running a really efficient diesel in your system instead of uh, a short acting high octane fuel you know so sugar is really short acting and and gives you a initial lift but a, a faster drop whereas ketones are, are a slow burn you know and they and therefore they keep the energy really consistent in the system they have an appetizing suppressant kind of uh, effect on the brain because obviously if you're in ketosis you know you normally have fasted to get there and if anyone who's done any fasting will realize once you get to about day two or three and you move into ketosis you stop thinking about food so much you're no longer as hungry it's not such a big dominant deal for you you know you're not feeling god i have to eat now you're thinking well i I could eat and that smells nice but it's like a smelling a flower it's kind of you know it's another nice thing but i don't have to have it you get past that that point and so you have you know taking exogenous ketones and moving into that straight away means that it becomes like that for you you could eat you feel like you're much lighter and leaner but you don't feel like you have to eat so you can stretch it out between meals which is super important because the biggest issue that people have as well when they're on that roller coaster is they're eating too frequently <coughs> and, you, and your migrating motor complex of your small intestine takes four to five hours to kick in. So they're tending to get this congestion in their, in their, um, uh, in their lower digestive system and that contributes to this toxicity over time. So ketones allow you to have bigger spaces between meals. It stops you having to think about food when you're engaged in whatever you're engaged in. And when you do go to eat, you generally feel like protein, fat, and greens, you know? So um, that being like a, just like a, a chicken salad or, or, or a lamb and vegetables, or, um, or if you're you know, moving in a vegetarian direction, then you're doing it with you know, coconut oil and those sorts of things to really dry, drive your system. And, um, and again, once you eat, you feel like, oh, I'm kind of content for a, a good four to five hours easily, you know? So it's much easier to create that space to run your body leaner and, uh, and not have to use as much energy to digest food as well. So you, cause you just don't eat as much per, per serving. So yeah, just a much a more efficient system for the body. I think the longer you can be in ketosis, the better for you, you know? So in, in, the, in the long term, it's how effective are you at managing that yourself? So if you get to the point where you can manage your own ketosis through diet, then then that's awesome, but it's in um, in modern living, it's not easy to do. You know, realistically, I'm very focused on what I put into my system, um, but it's far easier for me to to use an exogenous form of ketones so that I have one meal that puts me straight in it, and then I can just have a couple other meals that day, which I know will maintain it for me. So long term, that makes it easy to do. You know, so um, and also again in those time periods where you've got high demand, like you might have. Um, had a pretty highly engaged morning and you've got meetings in the afternoon and evening, you know, that <clears throat> that would be a high risk time to <laughs> start ingesting sugars and that kind of stuff. But if you've got um, your, your kid OS, you can go to that, make a good shake up, give you the energy um, that you need at that time and the mental clarity that you need. And you just, therefore, you, you, you're less likely to, you know, deviate off track in order to try and get the energy you, you need to meet demand. So, you know, long term, it's something that, that if you want to maintain the benefits of ketosis, you've got to work out a way to stay in it. Um, and, if, and once you're doing that, you're going to find generally across the board that uh, having exogenous forms of that is by far the easiest way to maintain it without, you know, becoming, um, I guess, uh, keto neurotic. <laughs> Ketogenesis is the way in which your body generates ketones, you know, so it's, it's the mobilization of fats through the glucagon system in order to, for your body to start to um, convert fat to energy, okay, because fats are obviously a store of energy that your body has to, to use in various times. Um, and so that requires a certain hormonal system to switch it over to start burning fats, because if you if you've got enough carbs and sugar your body doesn't worry about fats it just keeps storing them you know and that's why people just will accumulate fat if they have too much sugar um, whereas it, once your body goes into the formation of ketones it's a whole shift in hormone hormones that happen in the body in order for that to occur exogenous ketones in and of themselves are not a weight loss tool right they're, they're actually a source of energy and, and therefore 
you know, they're, they're, they, uh, they're a fuel that your body, you're putting in just like food that you're going to use. So you're not going to be using your own fats at that time. But the beauty of them is that they, they, they move you into that cycle that hormonally that your body's burning fat. So as that, that exogenous ketone gets used up in, in that sort of three to five hours that you take it, then if you eat those foods that are gonna keep you in that, then you just maintain your own natural state of, of ketosis after that. Um, so, you know, it just makes that transition a, a lot easier. And then, and as I was saying before, that when you're, on, uh, when you're in ketosis, your desire for sugars goes away. So not only do you not eat sugar, which is the number one thing that's contributing to uh, you're putting on weight, um, but you're, you're also, as you eat a meal, you're not ten, tending to eat as much because you, your meals have got a more calorie dense uh, and more nutritionally dense, so you feel satisfied a lot quicker and you just don't need to eat as much. As we started to look at what was going on with, with people who were suffering from anxiety or depression or chronic fatigue, and we started to look into what was actually growing in their gut, we're seeing that there's a massive imbalance in the, in the microflora, and that they they get this overgrowth of you know streptococcus and these 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 groups of bacteria that stop the proliferation of the good bacteria that you need that actually synthesize the the precursors of your neurotransmitters. So, to, in order for your body to make serotonin, and 90% of your serotonin is made in your, in your in your gut, but in order for it to make it in the brain, your body needs to synthesize tryptophan. And E. coli in the gut will, will synthesize tryptophan and then transport that into the brain to convert over to 5-HTP and then into, into serotonin. Um, you know, you, you, these, these bacteria still will also produce tyrosine, which we then goes on to make dopamine and noradrenaline. So <clears throat> if you've got an overgrowth of the wrong things in your gut or too much of stuff that, that, that you know, basically these bacteria that we know rely on sugar and starch you know so klebsiella streptococcus and those sorts of things then they're the ones that, that when once they have uh, they're proliferating then it really tends to block the growth of the the bacteria that is essential for a healthy brain function if you stop feeding the the bacteria sugar and starch is uh, then that could because when you feed those bacteria, those bacteria produce uh, chemicals that then get absorbed into the, into the bloodstream. Um, those chemicals, such as lipopolysaccharide, are the things that actually can get into your joints and make your joints feel stiff, but they're also, as they build up in your system, then they actually cause the brain fog and congestion and tiredness that your brain can experience, because your brain becomes, becomes inflamed, and, the, and the, uh, the, the glial cells and the microglia that exist in there to, to take out the trash just get overwhelmed. So you, you, the spaces between your neurons start to become congested because you're not taking out the trash enough. And you imagine your home, if you don't take out the trash and it starts to stink up the place, then, then you know, the functioning of the home doesn't work properly. And the same thing happens um, in the body that, and especially in the brain, that if you can't take out the trash effectively, then not only do you create inflammation, but you start creating a risk of infection. And there's certain things that, um, both virus and bacteria and, and moles that get into the brain that really create a lot of trouble. So moving people away from that, and we're seeing just a lot more of that today as we both, as we become more aware of it, but just noticing that this is, people are more prone to this. And it might be other modern day stresses that are contributing, such as Wi-Fi and, and the increase in electromagnetic issues we're dealing with that, um, maybe other predisposing factors, but um, it's sort of it's heading in that direction when we look at the research. But being able to shift people away from sugars and move them into ketosis is the thing that allows the, that, that gut flora to start to return to a more normal state. Um, and as it does that, then those bacteria that are required to make the precursors for all the things that your brain needs are now working much more effectively and you move back into a normal biochemical state. But as soon as you, you throw uh, high calorie you know, sugars and stuff into, into the system, then that just feeds those other bacteria and those, as, as those other bacteria proliferate, they create that waste product that then your body's got to deal with. And you know, essentially 40% of the toxicity your body's dealing with on a daily basis is coming from your microbiome. Um, so whatever you're feeding that, especially if you're feeding it, you know, a chocolate milkshake that I was talking about earlier, you can imagine that that creates a whole bunch of waste that your body has to deal with, not just from the milkshake itself, but from the byproducts that are created through the microbiome. And some of those things are really toxic and, um, and have very detrimental effects on both the bowel itself, but then also systemically right through the system, especially your brain. 
Uh, so you know, so ketones play a huge role for the, you know in, in terms of um, well moving onto a ketogenic diet plays a huge role for the health of that microbiome and moving it back into a more normal state. Um, but also when your body's in ketosis, your brain just has a lot better mental clarity anyway because it's using those, um, you know, those ketones as its fuel source in the brain, uh, which tends to have an anti-inflammatory effect on the, on the brain itself, which uh, you know, given that when your brain is slightly inflamed, that's when you have that, you can't, oh, what was I saying again, that you just lose that, that thought, you know, or what was that person's name? Like that, that's inflammation, that's your neurons not connecting anymore. Right or, or things blocking that pathway, uh, and and when you when you take those inflammatory things out, then your brain's back to that sharpness and your memory is back, and you've got that clarity again, which is just you know, is super important, and and you know because that's affecting a lot of people because the normal diet that people are on just isn't working for them. So as a practitioner, exogenous ketones just give us a shortcut, you know. In order to put people on these diets, that transition can be really challenging for them and you know, and they've got to deal with all their different addictions to foods and, and you know, that shift in energy and the and the depletion they feel when they're when they initially make that shift. And it feels like they're, you know, how can this be good for me, you know, <laughs> to to get to that place. Um, whereas exogenous ketones just give us a shortcut to straight into that ketosis and um, and people feel really naturally good when they're on them straight away and it gives them that lift of, of energy and, and the mental clarity and that sort of and the, and the reduced appetite all those things happen really quickly when you take exogenous ketones and that allows us to address the other things that are maybe causing it emotionally in terms of their life you know their their choices around foods and to, and to help them educate themselves on how to eat better whilst we create a simple solution to it so it's you know considering how many how much uh, sugar and and uh and high calorie starchy sort of foods disrupt a person's health and disrupt disrupt their emotional stability given we can give something that's so simple to do uh, uh, and so effective and, and and creates change quickly it's so motivating for people to make those bigger transitions and uh, and they can see the benefit of it quickly, and that that's just critical for for making that shift for them, and um, and and it's also safe and effective for a whole you know broad spectrum of people. You know whether you're giving it to kids to stop them having so much sugar, um, or whether you're giving it to adults, um, and especially teenagers who just have these insatiable appetites and that are just it's amplified a lot, especially when they're having uh, sugary drinks or anything like that. And you move them to this sort of healthier model of that. Um, even for them to get through a music festival or study effectively, you know, you can use ketones as a tool to help them really specifically cater to the energy needs that they have in, in those sort of situations. And, and that's, that's an awesome tool. That, that beats, you know, uh, having a, a Red Bull or, or having the coffee before they do an exam and the up and down kind of implications of that and the risk of anxiety that, that occurs because of it. So. You know, I'm really excited about all the different um, ways in which you can you can use it. Uh, uh, you know, in different areas of lives and at different stages, di different areas of people's lives and at different stages of life. So, look, we know that um, you know that sort of brain inflammation we're talking about. The end stage of that is Alzheimer's, and, and we're talking about 600% increase in Alzheimer's in females over 50 now, right? You know, people are worried about terrorists. <laughs> these, these, these stresses out there that are going on that are unreported at the moment because it's an inconvenient truth, these, these are massive and these are a huge, much bigger threat to people's existence than, you know, what the media goes on about all the time. So, you know, and we know that, hey, that these are caused by a buildup of, of chemical toxicity, primarily of aluminium, you know, um, and also too much sugar, which creates that oxidative stress and causes this dysfunction that happens intracellularly once the body can't get that energy out. And it oxidizes the mitochondria, which is the energy producing battery of every cell. Once that mitochondria becomes damaged, then it's f just firing off free radicals all the time, which damage the inner compartment of the cell. And that cell can't make its proteins properly. So it starts to make dysfunctional amyloid protein. That amyloid protein fills up your brain and that's Alzheimer's, right? So that's, that's what's happening. We know what's the cause, we know how it works. And, and yet 
people aren't addressing it and it's going up exponentially like you know like autism is which is a reflection of toxicity and too much sugar you know that's essentially what's going on there and, and ketones obviously are a way to to address the sugar side of that equation and then we need to deal with the, the, the toxic elements. Well, I think for, for practitioners, the first thing you do is try yourself. You know, you can't recommend anything until you can actually, you know, experience it and know how it feels. So, you know, I think it's important for practitioners to, 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 to get on it themselves. I know for me, it makes a huge difference because I'm, I, I tend to work in four or five hour blocks. And if I was to eat anything, even fruit, before, before a shift, then I find my blood sugar is up and down and mid shift I'm looking for something that I need to eat or I'm feeling like, I'm, like hunger starts to pervade my consciousness instead of the focus of the, of the person that I'm with. Whereas when I went on to exogenous ketones, um, I used to think I'd have to eat a big breakfast in order to get through the day. But now I have a, like a small breakfast. I'll have like broth with a, with a poached egg in it and some greens and then I'll have um, an exogenous ketone a um, little shake a bit later in the day and that kind of takes me right through. I can do a whole day on that if I want to, you know, and just come home and then just have a nice dinner. So um, I tend to have either ketones first thing and then just go right through until I get to lunch um, or I'll have a nice breakfast if I've got time and then I, I'll have the ketones later and have a small lunch, you know, and then just have, it and have a good dinner. So for me, it just means consistent energy, no blood sugar up and down and, and, it, and you know, I'm really healthy, but I can sense, I can feel my genetic draw towards type 2 diabetes anyway I can feel how much you know if I do have sugars how it affects my system at this at this age for me and I'm like wow it's so important to know that subtlety so you don't it just end up there you know because um, I've got such a strong genetic history of that so you know being able to use something like um, keto OS and just get myself off sugar you know to and and still feel like I've got the energy in fact better energy than I've ever had to deliver at the level I expect of myself is, is just being critical so you know for other practice I'd say just you know get yourself on it work out what form and how what time of day best suits you and get a good understanding of it because it can just help so many other people yeah for me because I'll kind of tend to use it you know, I've got to be efficient in my week. To, I don't have a lot of time spare, so I'll, um, I'll I'll tend to have it as a meal replacement when I have it. So if I have it for breakfast, I'll have it with you know two thirds water, one third coconut milk. We generally use inside out coconut milk as an organic cold pressed version, um, and then I'll put some greens just out of the garden, um, and then. Uh, yeah, that's that's the this, just to just to help. Yeah, again, it, it, whenever you use greens, it's helping your body break down fats more effectively, which is helping me m my body move that transition from exogenous ketones or keto OS into making my own ketones from my, the own the fats in my body. Um, and then later in the day, when, when I'm having the next, the first meal I have, I always make sure I've got dressing that's you know you, you've been very generous with your olive oil or your coconut oil and, and a mix of different oils like that within the meal. Um, so you, you, you can, again, that you can easily transition to running on those sorts of fats through the day as well. Mm -hmm.